Hey, gang. Richard here from Amazing Plastic, the Scale Model Show. You guys know who I am. Recently, Louis uh, Matarazzo asked the question, how do you find time to get to your bench, and how do you juggle things in your daily life? And a little bit about who you are as, as a model builder in person. So I thought to myself, okay, well, what's the best way to answer this? When did I get started building models? Well, like most of us, I got started at a very, very young age. My, the very first model I had was a National Geographic, I believe, uh, bear and its cubs uh, plastic model kit that uh, I built with a glue called honey glue because my grandmother, who uh, was looking after us that summer, would not allow me to use traditional model glue. Um, and I think I was right around seven years old pretty sure that's that's about how old i was um and, and i was kind of bitten by the model building bug i was fascinated because my brothers my older brothers had uh, built models and things like that so i was really kind of fascinated by that that uh that hobby so i i'd buy models when i could afford it uh, models, of course, even back then when I was a kid, back in the uh, early 70s, late 60s, early 70s, um, you couldn't get uh, model kits at a very reasonable price, so you had to save up your allowance, that kind of stuff. Um, or you got them for birthdays and, and that kind of deal. So the very first uh, model kit I ever built stayed at my grandmother's, and I didn't build models again until the summer of 78 when Star Wars, in 1978 when Star Wars came out. Um, I was about 13 years old and, and again the, the model bug had bit me because I was fascinated by the X-Wings and the TIE Fighters and all the, the great ships that were in Star Wars. So the very first model kit that I bought of course was an X-Wing. Um, and then I, uh, I managed to pick up an R2-D2 and some of the other kits along the way. Really enjoyed building them. Didn't do a great job building them. I mean, I probably made giant glue bombs, if I remember right. Didn't paint them very well because back then painting techniques uh, and the modeling community as it is today didn't exist. And uh, so modeling magazines were few and far between. Uh, especially where I lived in northern Manitoba in Canada. Currently, I live in Calgary, Alberta in Canada. And uh, uh, now, of course, I run a internet production company called Naked Ape Productions. Uh, as I grew through building models, I got out of it as most teenagers do. Um, because, of course, I discovered girls like most teenagers do. <laughs> and uh, um, that became my focus. And uh, when I became 17, I started in the entertainment business uh, as a disc jockey at a local bar. And uh, then moved on to staying in that career for many, many years and working radio, uh, behind the scenes on television, behind the scenes on, on uh, movie productions and so on and so forth, which I still do today. Um, over that period of time, you have other jobs that you do, and I was really kind of out of the whole model building um, genre for a long, long time. Uh, when I met my current wife, uh, Jerry, I dabbled back into it. I was really interested in it because she became interested in building scale model Mustang cars, 125th scale Mustangs. To my chagrin, she would buy the cars but never build them. So we still, to this day, have a large collection of Mustang cars from 64 right up to um, uh, 1970, uh, current Mustangs. And uh, I started collecting kits uh, that I liked. And I was getting back into buying Star Wars kits and Star Trek kits and and uh, bought a couple of trucks and things like that because I'm a Ford guy myself. Um, however, that being said, we turned around and my brother, one of my older brothers came to me and said, Hey, listen, you got to really try this game called Warhammer. It's all about building scale models, which you love to do. And you do a wonderful job at it and you should play the game because it's much like chess and, and risk all kind of combined, but there's a real hobby aspect to it. Uh, I really took to the hobby aspect to it more so than I took to actually playing the game. So I started building miniatures and uh, through that work that I did with miniatures, I was able to secure a position for about a year and a half with Games Workshop, the manufacturer of uh, Warhammer and Warhammer 40K and uh, Lord of the Rings games and, so, and many, many more. 
Uh, so I did a lot of that kind of stuff, and uh, then I got burnt out really quick because over that period of time, I was painting up to 20 miniatures a week. Um, so it was almost becoming like an assembly line. And when your hobby becomes work, it becomes, uh, for some of us, I- I'm assuming, it-, it becomes difficult to stay interested in it. And that was kind of my problem. I, I had to get away because I was burning out really quick. Because not only was I making miniatures, but I was also making uh, tables for people and, and, and terrain to put on those tables. Um, which I, the other day I just dug out my box of molds uh, that I've had from uh, a company called Her Starts that I used to cast and make buildings for uh, terrain. So uh, I'll be showing those on an upcoming episode of Amazing Plastic. Now, fast forward, um, after that, of course, I still had all these model kits, but left them kind of in the box and maybe dabbled in them, looked at them once in a while, cleaned off a little uh, flash or whatever, but put them back in the box because I never could capture that interest again. Uh, And then I was looking for a hobby to do when I wasn't producing uh, content for the internet or working behind the scenes uh, on shows like Heartland, um, I decided that, you know, I might as well pull out all these model kits because I have boxes of model kits. Let's pull them out and start working on them. And I talked to quite a few uh, modelers before I decided to do that. And one thing struck me is that there wasn't a show that encompassed all kinds of everything about models. There's a lot of genre-based shows. Uh, if you want to do cars, if you want to do planes, if you want to do sci-fi, what I wanted to do was bring all that kind of together into one show and and involve the community, you guys, uh, like Lewis, and you know really talk about what it is that we can do to better ourselves as modelers. So that's where the idea for Amazing Plastic came from. Um, now, where do I find the time to build? Well. I'm forced to build once again, much like the days I back at uh, uh, Games Workshop, but now I do it for me. I don't do it for anybody else, uh, and I can produce uh, my show around building model kits. Am I a great model builder? I wouldn't say so. Am I a competent model builder? Sure. Uh, Where do I find the time? I try and take, here's a typical day for me (laughs) for Naked Ape Productions, is first thing in the morning when I get up, I'm usually down here in the studio, which is in my home, uh, roughly around 7, 7.30 in the morning. And I go through a lot of uh, stuff on YouTube. People that have subscribed to us, I subscribe to them. So I watch their videos and I watch... Uh, what they're doing, and uh, I kind of extrapolate what I can use to make an interesting show out of that for Amazing Plastic. So I spend a lot of time watching YouTube videos, which helps me to better my skills as a modeler, and it helps me to present other people that may be coming into the community, maybe have been around a while and may not be exposed to some of the uh, community members or, or subscribers on the channel. So I use that and I make notes and and that kind of stuff. And then I do my phone calls, which uh, some days takes me right up till noon. And then I get to the bench, uh, usually afternoon or if I'm not engaged in a a Google Hangout, which tends to happen um, a little bit more than some days I'd like it to. Uh, And then some days you just, I have no motivation to do anything. And I just, you know, sit down and I I watch stuff. Um, So... All said, I guess I, I it's a daily job for me. So, uh, you know, I try and find three to four hours a day. As you can see, there's some stuff on the bench now that, that I'm working on for the show. Um, and uh, we're going to be showing you a lot of that stuff coming up. But uh, the show is continuing. For those of you that, that uh, are wondering what happened to the show, we've had a lot of problems uploading to YouTube. That problem now is solved. Um, and the show is going to... Um, going to be once a week it's going to be on fridays again 
Um, the reason for that is I tried the experiment for twice a week. It really wasn't working. Uh, don't have enough submitted content from people in our community to carry it for as many episodes as I would have liked. So uh, the onus, again, falls on me to, to uh, build that content and get as many episodes out as I can. Um, we've got some wonderful sponsors uh, for the show, and uh, we've got some great stuff for you guys. Um, so to all my styrene brothers out there, keep it real, keep at the bench, keep working. Don't get frustrated. If you make a mistake, try and correct it. If you can't correct it, you know what, move on, go to, go to something else and learn from that mistake. I do it all the time. There are some kits here that, that I've bashed so badly that they're beyond repair. Um, to Lewis, man. Just do what you can do, and I know life gets in the way, man, and, and uh, uh, it certainly has for me recently as well. We have, we've had some uh, bad news in, in our family. Um, not horrific news yet, but, but bad news, and I won't go into that. But uh, we are moving forward. The show is moving forward. I'm going to keep trying to bring you guys content. Lewis, just keep going, keep focused. Find that kit that really excites you and go to town. Uh, don't worry if you don't have all the the equipment and this is something I want to stress to a lot of the the new people that might be watching this if you don't have all the equipment that a lot of us guys have don't worry about it do with what you have build up your equipment slowly like any good mechanic he starts off with a wrench set and he moves from there and you know you start off with the basic tools that you need like a knife and some files and some sandpaper and and uh, some glue and you move on from there and you grow as as you grow in the hobby. Um, so for now, I'm Richard, and that's all I got to say. Hope that helped. Later. <laughs>